I'm John Valeris. This is Center Stage on 610 AM WTEL, a very, very open entertainment show, open forum, as we get kind of inside the guests, not so much of what they're doing, but a little bit about themselves and, of course, uh, about a show. Like this show we're talking about with our next guest is Mob Wives. This is in, uh, I guess it's uh, Series 5. It's in the uh, fifth season? Yeah, it's Season 5. I'm here with Natalie DiDonato. Is that the correct way to say it, Natalie? Absolutely. Natalie DiDonato. All right, Natalie. Okay. I'm going to cut right to the chase. Oh, Thank boy. you for being here. Sure. We're going to, we had the mayor earlier. So Thank now, you for having me. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're here. So, I want to know, I, I kind of know the story that to, for the, uh, to be on the mob wires, mm -hmm. you had a call. Someone called you from? I got a phone call. Um, from a gentleman by the name of Bobby Capone. He's um, a Philadelphia native. He's friends with Jennifer. They were in conversation. Jennifer was saying how she needed a new girl for the show, new blood. They were looking um, in Pradop, I think they were looking in, um, they were looking in New York, at Howard Beach area. And um, long story short, he was like, nah, scratch that. There's this girl in South Philly. She's like 10 girls in one. You gotta just give her a shot. You gotta meet her. Wind up was, I got a private casting call ever since that day. Been filming with them since. Now, uh, you fan, were you a fan of the Mob Wives before? Yeah, absolutely. I watched, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, it's full of drama. Um, it's, it's multiple different, you know, multitude of different things. But I, I like the show. Now, this is fascinating. And now, to be on the show, you have to have some kind of a background, though, or something to do with uh, in the family of organized crime, correct? Correct. And your cousin was Frankie Flowers? Yes, Frankie D'Alfonso. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what happened to Frankie? He got gunned down in the streets of South Philly. And what year was this? Uh, 19, I was four years old. Mm -hmm. um, so it was 1984. Do you remember that at all? No, like my that? grandfather was really close with Frankie uh, Donato Fuco. That's my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And um, he has stories for days. And he was devastated, completely distraught. So, I mean, but he continues on and talks about Frankie and, you know, his beliefs and how a, a good man that he was. And you grew up in South Philadelphia all your life? My entire life. South Philly, born and raised. Where'd you go to school? Epiphany of Our Lord and then St. Maria Goretti. I went to community and then I went to Temple University. You graduate of Temple? Sure did. Broadcasting major? No. Early childhood education, accounting, and real estate. So you're a Temple girl? I am. With a mob connection... Uh -huh. <laughs> that that is now on the mob wives, and now in a big battle in the mob wives. We'll get into that in a moment. You're battling the Natalie. You're Natalie D. She's Natalie G. Uh -huh. And we'll get into the little riff going on on the show. But first, I'm fascinated. I mean, growing up in South Philly, uh, I, I guess is it unusual? I mean, the people come up to you and say, "Well, you know." I'm, my cousins were in organized crime. Is it a norm? I mean, how does that, as a child, you go into school and people must know, listen, your cousin was Frankie Flowers gunned down. Right. Is that ever, is that an impactful thing going to school when you're in high school or junior high or, or you don't you think know, anything about that? let me that? tell you, for the most part, it's code of the street. In South Philly, I really, I'm not going to say everyone because I don't want to. I don't want to say everyone, but for the most part, a lot of people are involved with organized crime and not everyone, but people, some people are shady. They cut corners instead of taking the long route. And with that being said, people don't make a big fuss of that. They don't make a big fuss and people don't, people that are really legit stand up and kind of know the, know the code. They don't ask questions. See me, if you buy a new car, buy a new house, you'll never hear me say, how'd you do that? It's more along the lines, God bless you. People that ask too many questions are normally, like, suspect. I don't like too many. Not that we're, right now we're in an interview. Right. It's the obvious that you're going to drill me and ask me questions. Mm -hmm. That's protocol. But I kind of, I kind of stay to myself. Mm -hmm. I've learned to be quiet. And um, you're very much involved in certain charities. Yes, I am currently. In South Philly. Now, yes. there's one, uh, Women Against Abuse. Is that, what, is that your biggest? Women Against Abuse, 10 Years Strong, continuing on. Yes, it's my biggest charity that I'm involved in right now. Is there, is there a per personal reason why you're involved with Women Against Abuse? Yeah, absolutely. How I got involved with Women Against Abuse is I'm an advocate. Um, many years ago, I had a situation, and uh, instead of being a victim, I became a survivor. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, instead of, you know, dwelling on it, I wanted to help other women out that were in similar situations and, you know, be able to help them and give to the charity. Tell me, tell me about the charity. When, when was the last event and, and, and where was it held? Uh, the charity for Women Against Abuse was in conjunction with Toys for Tots. It was um, in uh, December. It was a Christmas charity event at the Tower on Broad and Spring Garden. Um, beautiful event. It was done in a nine. My team, my team, where um, I opened up my own business. It's called Puro mm-hmm. LLC. Uh, Puro in Italian means pure. I have a DJ that I manage. His name is DJ Major. And um, the event was live. It was beautiful, glamorous, filled with the most beautiful people, uh, my work associates, colleagues, real estate people, most importantly, everyone that attended brought a gift or a charitable donation. Every The whole night went accordingly, and it was just completely done in a nine, perf- perfected. And this was the first one? This was the, this was the first the event that I had. Okay. Uh-huh. It was a Christmas... Um, it was an hors d'oeuvre event where it was like small bites, open bar, dance floor was packed, everyone was wearing ballroom gowns, it was black tie optional, and um, a lady by the name of Chris, who owns a business called Event Effects, donated over $12,000 in decorations. Wow. She swanked the place out. I'm talking crystal chandeliers, um, certain stones that she put in the chandeliers, four Christmas trees, red carpet, plush red carpet. I'm talking like the red carpet never ended. Um, also, in addition, we had, uh, she had certain types of sofas, antique pieces. I was blessed to have her part of this team to help out. Um, a lady by the name of CJ, who was a blogger, she came on board. I mean, before you know it, we had a small, small, minimal team. The team expanded, and everyone was so intrigued. Everyone was so interested. They all wanted to help out. You're going to do it again? I'm going to continue. It's going to be an annual event. This event will carry on. The reason that I'm doing these charity events is, um, ideally, I want to have my own charity. Okay. And uh, Nat D gives back, or just Nat D, or Puro. It doesn't even have to be about Nat D. More along the lines, like, I could never just take the... I could never just take credit without... Key, Reginald, and Tony, they really are my backbone. It always takes a team. Yeah. And what's your dream? I mean, what what's your goal? I mean, do you... I mean, my goal? Yes. What is your goal? My goal is to be financially stable, rich, um, you know, predominantly uh, entrepreneur, mogul. Are you in a relationship? No. Uh, have you been married? Yes. That's over? Yes, been over. Let me ask you something. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Now, if someone was to ask you out, do, do, do they get a little nervous about the mob thing if they're just like saying, oh, well, let me look up Natalie, you know, with social media, their chick background. Mm, beautiful woman. Oh, my God, she's so hot. But, hey, there's some connection here. She's on the Mob Wives. Is, is that um, a negative thing? I mean, do you find that? I got to tell you, um, my entire life, um, men have always gravitated. It's never been an issue mm-hmm. for me to, you know, find a date, find a man. That's never well, been a problem. Well, you're physically beautiful, Thank you. gorgeous. But um, as far as a threat, if anything was going to be a threat, I think that mm-hmm. me personally would be more of a threat, being that I have my stuff together, being that um, you'll never know really what you're going to get from me, you know, and um, it's kind of intimidating for some men. Now, I can believe that. Listen, we're going to have a commercial, and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the little battle going on between Natalie D. and Natalie G. Uh, on the Mob Wives. And we can write back on 610 AM WTEL, Center Stage with John Belarus. Hey, it's John Belarus. When it comes to the weather, you definitely need to know, and you need to know now. It needs to be accurate. It needs to target your neighborhood. Use WeatherSavior.com exclusively for your daily weather forecasts, snow amounts, and breaking weather news weathersavior.com all right welcome back 6 10 a.m wtel john belaris center stage with john belaris i gotta remember that all right i'm here with natalie di donato from mob wives south hey. philly girl hey in the house in the house is that is that the, is that the cool talk i'm, I'm trying to be cool I'm i don't know i cool. just be me but you know. all right yeah you gotta be you right if you're not you you can't be anyone else <laughs> makes sense um all right so talking a little bit off the air you you did have a relationship and you broke that off uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, sometimes things just don't work out. But I wish him the best. Um, you know. That's not what you said. <laughs> yeah. a- I wish him the best. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I could sit here and talk smack all day, but who really, you know. All right. I, I'd mm-hmm. rather take the higher road. You looking to be married one day? Sure. Um, my wedding was one of the best days of my life. Really? 
I had a beautiful wedding, absolutely. I was with him for 12 years. Mm -hmm. He was my high school sweetheart. Wow. And he just currently got remarried, and I'm really happy for him. We don't speak, but, you know, hey. At the Does end that of the hurt at all that he's married again? The territorial thing at all? No. He's still nothing, though. No, not at all, because, you know, even when we got divorced, we really tried to, you know, work our differences out. Mm -hmm. No matter what happened, we would always get back. And um, there just became a point in our life where we just said, you know, it's time for us to just venture off and do our own thing. He's happy. I hear he's happy. And that, it touches my heart because he's a good guy. And I want that for him. And Natalie's happy? Oh, yeah, I'm happy. I don't need a man. No. If I'm going to have a man, it's because I want him. But, you know, right now, you really want to focus on my career. You need a man. No, I don't need anyone. Okay. I need me. But anyhow, um, I need to focus on my career. Okay. And focus on, you know, taking the right direction. And that way, I can stay in the left lane. Mm -hmm. Going, going fast and getting stuff done. Okay. You're, and you're no distractions. Focused. Yeah, if you're going to be in my life, be in my life for the right reason. Don't okay. have ulterior motive. You're very focused. Extremely. Everyone I talk to that's successful is very focused and have a, they have a vision. They have a goal. Well, you could get knocked out of your box real easy. You got that right. Especially I'm, when you're in your feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to stay focused and you have to make your job your baby. Right. It's not take how, care of it. It's not how you fall, it's how you get up. Right. All right, now, Mob Wife, you guys got something going on here. Natalie G., all right? I've been reading all about this. Rattly. Rattly. You call Rattly. her Rattly. She, mm, we she, all call her that. She ratted on her boyfriend. And number one, mm -hmm. Natalie There's more G. than that story, but we'll, right. we'll get into it. All right, Natalie G. Mm -hmm. is not really from South Philly. She fakes that funk. You can pull her birth certificate. She was born in Newark, New Jersey. She is not from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. She states that she's from Philadelphia. Her bio states that she's from Philadelphia, but... She's not from Philadelphia. I mean, that goes hand in hand with everything she says. It's fraud. D did you know her at all? I did not know her personally, mm -hmm. but I know of her. And my friend was dating her, and she was working for my girlfriend, where she was doing, long story short, <laughs> when it came time for her to leave my girlfriend's salon, she slandered the business. She tried to get them fined and shut down. And she did some real scumbag moves because she's a scumbag, and that's mm -hmm. like her M.O., she doesn't play clean. She plays dirty. She's been trying to get any... I mean, the girl's been literally... I've seen her in the parking lot. She was shoveling, looking for dirt when I walked in. She's calling everybody and their mother, asking if she could get dirt on me. Well, well let me ask you something. How do you, you know, do the show when you want to kill each other? I mean, I, it's... I'm okay. Gonna, the mob wives, listen, it, it's a reality show. Let me give you the logistics right, of it. Okay. Short and sweet. There's going to be drama. There's going to be fighting. Natalie refuses... She doesn't want to film with me. I have to be very careful about what I say. Can't get too much information out. Okay. But, I mean, she's scared. She talks a really good game. The reunion's coming up. And the reunion will be in February. Reunion. We have not filmed the reunion yet. Where's that going to be held? Um, I believe it'll be in New York City. And you're going to be there with Natalie G. I will be there with all the cast members. We will all be, for mm -hmm. the first time, in a room together. You box? I do. How many, you've been training for how many years? I've read, I said, you got a left hook? What, what's going on? Yeah, actually, um, it was always a fun sport when I was younger. And um, I love boxing. It's something that I am really good at. If you're, if you're good at it, why not make it like an art? Does Natalie G know you're a good boxer? I mean, absolutely. It's why she won't step in the ring to make a couple dollars. You know, I mean. You want to do maybe raise money for charity? Absolutely. The proceeds okay. would go to a good cause. Uh, regardless, she's not going to do it. She's so punk. she talks that internet tough guy bully stuff. When do you start? Uh, when do you start filming again? I'm currently filming right oh, now. You're filming right now. Right as we speak, I'm still filming. Where? All right, give me the next day that you're going up to New York to film. Well, this is how it works. My schedule is never in stone. For the most part, uh, Monday night, I found out that I had be in New York Tuesday at one o'clock. Okay. So I don't have a flex schedule. I have to pretty much be ready to be on the go. Do you feel uneasy in front of the camera when they're shooting? Like, I'm looking, you know, you're in a reality show, so the camera's there. You know, you know you're know, you going to be on, this is going to air, on VH1, Mob Wives, mm -hmm. uh, season five, going to be season six soon. So, how do you react with the camera? Do you pretend it's not there, or do you know? I don't any, know, like, it really doesn't bother doesn't me at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, super thick skin. Um, knowing that I was doing the show, I had to make sure I was going to be prepared for the heat, the cameras, and I kind of took it with a grain of salt. All of it. But knowing it was a good stepping stone. Yeah. And it has been. A blessing. Who do you look up to? Uh, on the show? No. Who do I look up to? In life? Oprah Winfrey. Do you really? Uh, idolizer. Why? 
because of her story and how she has been extremely successful. She also handles all her own accounting. She's extremely business savvy. She's smart. She's intellectual. And she is extremely involved in charities. You've got some personality. You're yeah. very articulate. Mm -hmm. you're, you have a lot of uh, drive, passion. Thank you. I didn't know about Oprah Winfrey. Uh, give me the lowest moment of your life and give me then your current highest moment of your life. Um, okay. Lowest moment of my life um, when I was involved um, with a uh, domestic abuse situation mm -hmm. where I was, um, you know, Long story short, it was a tragedy for me, a very much of a setback. So someone Family affair. attacked you. Exactly. I, I was attacked. Uh, they highest, beat you physically? Yes. And it was a sexual assault. Uh -huh. And that's okay because I could speak about it and I'm fine with it. In addition, the highest point of my life was when I was 21 years old and I made management. And uh, I'll never forget it. It was like yesterday. It was an overachievement for me. Like I felt amazing. 21 years old making close to six figures really? at 21. Management for who? Miller Coffee Tate, um, a CPA firm in Center City. Uh, the owner, his name is George L. Miller. Hmm. He's also a trustee in Delaware. Extremely high uh, profile CPA, CFO, CEO. Um, also the managing partner of a CPA firm. Your mom's got to be really proud. Yeah, I would definitely say she... Uh, pats herself on the back. She didn't just do a good job with me. She, I have a 19-year-old brother, mm -hmm. and I have a uh, sister who's uh, in her 30s as well. She's younger than me. And uh, she's, we're all got our own thing going on. We're all successful. I mean, you, I mean, the abuse thing, I'm not going to go into it, but I can't even imagine mm -hmm. uh, a, as a woman what you had to go through. I want to make sure I let you know I was 21 years old when I spoke out about it the same year that I made management. Nothing can affect me. I still rose to the top, had a two year situation where it affected my life, but I picked myself back up and rolled with the punches. How old were you when you were? Uh, uh, 14. 14 years old. Yeah, it went on for a series of years, but I tackled the situation. I didn't tell anyone, I kept a secret inside. And with that being said, I'm a survivor. And I also do public speaking wow. and help women to try and be able to speak more freely about if something like this is going on or help their children being able to, you know, certain signs to be able to trigger. So we need to really get out women abuse with your charity when you when you do it again. Yeah, we'll be having um, an event uh, actually. I want soon. you to come back on with that. Definitely. Because that means everything to you. Yeah. It does. And I wish you the very best of success in the future, your career. Thank you're, you. You're a very bright young woman. Thank you. And you have a great career ahead of you, and you, you're very soulful, and you speak the truth. I like that. I'm glad okay. to see that you're back on action, back in action, doing your thing. Thank so you. God Thank bless you. I wish you all the success, accomplishments, and endeavors. Thank you very much.